Over the past year, we've seen the rise of shooters becoming easily the most dominant weapon class in Splatoon 2. This is not only affecting competitive play, but it's starting to become even more common in solo ranked. So what exactly happened, and what makes shooters so much better than every other weapon class in the game? Today I'm going to tell you the 5 reasons shooters rose to the best of the game, and what exactly should be done about them in Splatoon 3. If you enjoy this video and want to see more Splatoon content, please consider subscribing as it helps me out quite a lot. Let's get started. First up, startup and end lag buffs. Over the latter half of Splatoon 2's patches, shooters received both startup buffs, meaning you could shoot faster after exiting squid form, and end lag buffs, meaning you could enter squid form faster after shooting. While shooters already have pretty good mobility, this definitely shot them up quite considerably, allowing them to dodge and weave around a lot more easily, and giving them a lot of help in fights. Not only were these buffs important, but they went to every single shooter, so it was definitely a big part of the reason why they got better. Shooter buffs are one thing, but another important factor is that a lot of the options against shooters, or other strong options in general, got weaker over the course of the game. Some of the late game nerfs include Brella, Dooley Sculptures, Bamboo, H3, Ballpoint, and a lot of others. So not only were shooters being made substantially better, but other good options were being made weaker, meaning shooters also had to deal with less strong counters. However, Splatoon isn't just about main weapons, it's especially about specials, and shooters are absolutely great against special weapons. The majority of specials right now are displacement specials, and shooters are really non-committal as well as having insane mobility, which makes them great against that. But even against non-displacement specials, they're pretty good. They're one of the best weapons at fighting opponents with ink armor, shredding baller because of their ink efficiency, and being able to break Booyah Bomb. With how Splatoon 2 specials are designed, mobility and non-committal nature of shooters just gives them a huge edge over their competition. And if that weren't enough, there's another aspect that makes shooters really good with specials, which is the fact that they're very good at spamming the crap out of them. Shooters in this game have plenty of paint output, low points for special, and good ink efficiency meaning it's really easy to just spam a high amount of specials. Remember those few weapons that are good against shooters? Yeah, shooters don't have to bother fighting them, because a K-Shot can just get 10 missiles a game, a Jet can get 12, a Junior can get 10. Shooters could just absolutely afford to play around special spam and force the opponents which struggle against specials more to fight with a bunch of specials active like Tena Missiles and Ink Armor, making it even more of a pain to counter shooters because you're constantly going to have to deal with a barrage of special weapons. Finally, shooters have a lot higher margin for error. Now, I know some of you might find this surprising. What? It's not the big hitbox weapons like blasters or buckets? Yeah, it's the shooters. Splatoon is a movement-based game. The higher up you go, the more where exactly you stand, how fast you're able to rotate, and your timing come into play. And even for those bigger hitbox weapons, shooters have such good mobility that if you master being able to move around fast with main or sub strafing, you can be incredibly difficult to hit, stalling out fights and being able to get help from teammates. Shooters just overall have way more of a margin for error than anything else. And this is also true for building a team comp. Making weapons that work well together is really difficult, but shooters are such jack-of-all-trades that it's really easy to just run four of them, play around specials, and take fights together. They're one of the simplest meta comps to run in Splatoon's entire history. Meta can become popular because, well, they're seen as the best option. But when they're both the best option and the easiest thing to run, that'll just make their popularity explode, and that's what we've seen with shooters. Now that we understand why shooters are good, the real question is, what should we do about them going into Splatoon 3? And, I mean, a lot of us don't like quad shooter meta, myself included, and probably want to see these weapons nerfed. But I'm not sure if that's actually the best thing for the game. Let me paint you guys a picture. At the end of Splatoon 1, the meta was very aggressively orientated. There was quick respawn that activated every time you died, stuff like Luna, Range Blaster, H3, Dynamo, Mini Spotling were high in popularity. And when Splatoon 2 came out, all of these weapons got substantial nerfs. However, many of these weapons being good were due to either their weapon kits with invincibility specials or the game being as aggressive as it is. A lot of indirect changes from Splatoon 1 to 2 actually hurt these weapons even more. Because of that, many of these weapons like the H3 and Mini ended up needing buffs as the game came along, and some of them like Dynamo and Range Blaster still have not made it into the meta because they have yet to receive substantial enough buffs. 
While Quad Shooter may seem extreme now, you have to remember that Splatoon 3 is going to be a different game, and indirect changes may already be nerfing Quad Shooter. So, as much as it can seem like it would be great to just nerf these weapons, I really don't want shooters to suffer the same fate as Splatoon 1 top tiers. Trust me, I'm a range blaster player. I know how that feels. But outside of that, there's a bit of another problem, which is too many nerfs. As I've said before, part of the recent shooters rose to popularity is because a lot of other options got weaker. If we tone down shooters, we are just continuing to make the main weapon power lower and lower. Which, as we've seen with Splatoon 2, has already led to a more special spam oriented game style. On top of that, nerfs just suck. Having your favorite things get weaker over time is just not a great feeling. Buffs can absolutely add to your experience and are much more of what we should be getting in comparison so it would be much better for Nintendo to buff other options rather than nerfing shooters. Now, I could be wrong about this, and even if we see some ideal Splat 3 changes, there is a possibility shooters may still need nerfs. But if that's the case, I think we'll find out a few months into the game's launch and can make the change then, not nerf it before the game even comes out and end up having to buff it later. Now, none of this is to say I want nothing done. There are some general Splatoon 3 changes that I would like to see that would not only make the game better, but hurt Quad Shooter. The main aspect is points for special, which is something I've talked about in a different video, but for a smaller detail here, the minimum points for special should be 170, and the default should be 190 or 200, not the current 180 it is now, with the minimum being 160 or 150. Special spammy heavy shooters are part of the problem with this game in general, let alone a big problem with the meta right now. I don't really think weapons should be this dependent on specials in the entire game, let alone at the top level of the game, so it really needs to be toned back. Secondly, buffing main weapon power. Specifically, I want to highlight two weapon classes, Blasters and Dooleys. Both of these have some really important fighting weapons, such as Range Blaster, Luna, Luga, or Tetra, and these work well not only as shooter counters, but as really good options to pick more fighting heavy comps. Building comps around more aggressive weapons is really hard in Splatoon 2, but if there's a bit less special output and these weapons are a bit better, say Blasters not having jump RNG and main power of damage up not ruining every Dooley's existence, then it would be a lot easier to run comps that counter shooters and force them to take more fights with main weapons. Honestly, I think those two changes are really all that needs to happen. Of course, I could be wrong. We don't know enough about Splatoon 3 or the direction they'll go to say otherwise, but I think it's a great start to go there, and then we can make changes based on how things look. Will this be fixed in Splatoon 2? Probably not. Maybe if we get lucky, Nintendo will add some points for special nerfs to shooters to at least make it a little bit easier to counterplay, but I don't really see too much changing, and I don't have a huge issue with it since I do want the devs to focus on the third game. But let me know your thoughts on shooters and the current meta, and I'll see you all in a future video.